Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem um, that says um, to find the length of the longest substring in S that contains at most two distinct characters. And what does that mean? So for example, with this string, we want to find the longest, the longest substring that contains at most two distinct characters. So if we look at this, EC already contains distinct characters. Um, ECE still contains two distinct characters. So that's three, so that's the longer than the one we just did. And uh, the rest will contain three characters, so they don't, um, they don't fit. Um, and then for this one, um, the longest substring with at most two characters is this one here. Because it contains only two characters, A and B. Um, if we add C to it, it will be three characters, so we can do that. But we can have duplicates that allow us to maximize the length, right? Um, other use cases to pay attention to is A. For this one, since it said at most two distinct characters, we need to have um, one as the result, right? Because that's the, the length. And for an empty string, well, it's uh, the longest substring anyway is zero, so that's zero. Uh, for this one, the longest substring with at most two distinct characters. So the entire string contains one distinct character. So that's that fits the description here. So we need to return two as the length because that's the entire string here. If we had one with three, it still fits um, fits the description here because there is only one distinct character. And so the entire substring is, um, is valid for this condition. And so we can just return the length of that as three. And those are the test cases I have here. Uh, now let's think about how to solve this problem. So um, again, this problem says um, it wants the length of longest. Um, so you can notice longest substring. So basically, this means that we want the length of longest contiguous subarray. If we consider the string as a subarray, because it is, um, this is what we are looking for. And whenever we have longest, shortest, minimum, maximum, something to do for a contiguous subarray, we should immediately think about um, the sliding window technique. Um, now, let's think about how can we apply that. So the sliding window techniques means just having two pointers and advancing these two pointers um, in a way that construct a window that, that validates the condition we are looking for. And whenever we have a valid window, we try to get the goal that we are looking for, which is here the longest one, the length of the longest one. And we keep updating that. And we move i and j in different conditions um, until we, we reach our um, the end of the string, right? And so here, let's take it for this example. So we will need i as the start of the window, and j starts out here also at the start of the window, right? Let me just put some space so that this is more clear. Uh, now, what do we need for the window data? Always when we have, when we are um, thinking about the sliding window technique, we need to think about what data do we need to keep in order to be able to um, to update our window to get the longest one. And so, what is our window data here? So we know we need, we know we need to, um, we need to. Um, we know we need to now to know the occurrences of each character because. In order to know whether it's a distinct character or not, we need to know the occurrences. So we need occurrences, some map that tells us the, the occurrences of characters. And we know also that we want to know when we have two distinct characters, right? So we need some counter that tells us um, that there are, let's say, so with this counter, it just tells us how many distinct characters we have. So this will allow us to be able to say, okay, we have two distinct we have more than two distinct characters, so we can't we can't go longer. We have to shrink the window, right? And so again, once we have these two, we need to also know when to move i and when to move j. So j is easier to figure out. So we move j as long as as counter is plus or equal to two because those who are less or equal to two make the condition still valid. The condition, which is our um, our let's say sliding window condition, valid window condition, let's call it valid window condition is um, window contains 
must or equal to two distinct characters because the problem says at most. So let's call the window desirable if it verifies this condition here, right? And now, when to move J, we move J as long as counter is less than or equal to two. So as long as window window is desirable. And then when to move I, we move I when when the window becomes not desirable, basically because if we keep advancing and we already have more than two distinct characters, we only we're only going to have either the same number of distinct characters or more distinct characters, and so it doesn't make sense to keep expanding. We won't find anything that that is valid that we can um, try to use, and so it it doesn't make sense. So we shrink the window so that we can have less distinct characters, and so that we can have a new valid uh, window, right? Um, and this becomes window becomes not desirable when the counter here is bigger than two, right? And so now we know when to move i, we know when to move j, we know when we have a valid window, and we know we have this data. So let's try to run this here. So first, uh, the first con uh, place we are at e, so now we have e that is occurring, one, occurring once, and the counter since e doesn't exist before, so the counter gets updated to 1, right? And then we move j, because the window is still, the counter is still less than or equal to 2, so we move j. And now it's C. So now we have a C has value 1. And the counter um, becomes 2 because C was 0 before. And so the counter becomes 2. And um, so we keep track also of the result that we want, which is the best length so far, right? And so at this point, best length here is first it was 1. And then it becomes 2 when we had these two. So it became 2. And then when we move J again, we still have, now we have two E characters, but the counter is still two because E existed before, it was at one before. And so now we have the length is three because it's bigger so we can update. And now uh, if we move to B, now we have a new character, right? And so our counter becomes three. And when our counter becomes three, that means we need to move I, right? So we move I. And when we move i, um, now our best length, our length, current length becomes, uh, is still 3, so best length doesn't change. Um, but our e needs to be decremented by 1, right? So let's try what we need to do. So, um, so we know that when we are doing, um, so when, when we're moving, when moving i, we know that we need to, to do occurrence map for SI, the character at that, minus 1, because because we were here and and E was 2, right? But now when we move, the window now no longer contains 2, E contains just 1. So we need to subtract that, right? Um, and one other thing we need to do is when the occurrences of E becomes um, 0, let me show you. So if we move I, so we still have three count character, three characters. So the window is still not desirable. So we need to keep increasing I. So increase I again. And now C exists zero times. And now we no longer have C. And now we have just how many? Two characters, right? And since we decremented, um, so C became zero. So we decremented it with when moving I. Now its occurrence is zero. What do we need to do? The counter was three. So when we remove C and it became zero, we need to decrement the counter. So when the value at the beginning now, um, the number of occurrence became zero, we need to decrement counter, right? So we know what to do when moving I. Let's see what we need to do when moving J. So when we move J here, what do we need to do? We need to say, okay, A now occurs one time. So we need to say, occurrence map of j is now increased by 1, right? But also we need to increase the counter if h is, has just been added, which is the case. a wasn't there before, and so our counter needs to become 3. So here we need to check if sj um, is 
So we can check it before actually. So if it was zero, that means we just it's a new distinct character, right? So we need to increase our counter. Right? And and then we need to keep updating at each position, we need to keep updating the best, which is just the max length. And so it's just max of best and the length of the window. The current window, right? The length of the current window. And that's just max of best, and the length of the current window is j minus i. Uh, this is the start, and since we would have incremented i, uh, incremented j before, so this, this is the, the current window. If we didn't increment j before, it would have been j minus i plus 1. And yeah, so that's all. We know what ne we need to do. That's all we need to know when we applying sliding window technique. We need to know when to move i, when to move j, when to update the goal function. And we need to know uh, like what data will help us figure uh, figure out when when shrinking the window which is moving i and when expanding the window which is moving j. And now let's apply this then. Um, so let's just write the code of that does exactly what we described here. And so the code would be we need i and j right, and we need counter. And we said we need the best solution to keep track of the best solution, and so these are all zeros. And then we, re need, we need the occurrence map, right? And so let's take that occurrence map. Um, let's just, it's a counter, so let's just implement it like this. We can do a map, but this, this just makes it easier because um, values that are not in the array would be initialized to zero, in the map would be initialized to zero. Um, and so now we go through the string until we reach. Um, until we reach the end, um, or actually we can just do while. So we need to keep going until j reaches the end, and we need to check if. So we need to just do what we said here, right? Which is when moving j, we need to do this, right? So when moving j, we need to do this. What we said here: um, increase the count. Uh, check if it's zero. That means we have a new distinct character and then increase the occurrence of the character um, and then advance j, right? And now let's do what we said we need to do when moving i but we said when do we need to move i? When the window becomes not desirable so let's check when the window does not become desirable so that's when the counter is bigger than 2 that means the window is not desirable that's what we said here so at that point we need to move i and so moving i means doing this so we move i and we increment it, right? And then we need to find the best solution, right? We need to update with our best solution, which we, which we said is just the max of best and j minus i. And at the end, we need to return best, right? And so this is all we need to do. Um, let's see, so is there anything else we need to think? about so this pretty much yeah just translation of what we described here um, so let's run it okay so it passes for all text cases that I um, implemented here and so for this one we get three for this one we got five for this one we got one so I get empty and yeah you get the idea it worked for all the cases that we described here um, you can test it on more cases, but yeah, this is the code and uh, it should work fine. We can optimize this, like just make it a little bit nicer to look at by instead of doing a while loop and doing this j plus one, I don't like it. So we can just, instead of doing that, we can just do in a range of length of s. And this counter plus one is just, it adds plus one when it's equal to zero. So we can just with Python, since um, true means one, we can just do this. And we can do the same thing here. Since true means one, that means that we will inc decrement one only if it's um, if it's true. If it's false, it would be zero, right? And uh, and that should be it. But since we didn't inc we don't increment g until afterwards, then the window here size is plus one. And uh, yeah, that that solution passes too. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.